Welcome to The Unrealist. This is Chris. This video is the first in an occasional series where I'll attempt to recreate visual effects from various video games. If you guys have suggestions for effects you'd like to see recreated, go ahead and leave them in the comments and try to include a link to a video showing the effect if you can. I've been playing a lot of Overwatch lately, and I really like the visual style of this game and the effects have a lot to do with it. So I thought it would be fun if we start by recreating Winston's shield from Overwatch. You can see on screen now a reference video I captured of Winston's shield. We'll break it down feature by feature, starting with the white highlight that appears around the edge of the shield. Switching over to Unreal Engine, you'll see I've created a basic scene for us to work within. We'll start by right-clicking and creating a new material. I'll assign the material to our sphere and open the material for editing. With the main material nodes selected, we'll want to make it translucent. And we also don't want it to be affected by light and shadows, so we'll set the shading model to unlit. And because we want to be able to see the material whether we're inside or outside of the sphere, we'll make the material two-sided. Let's start by giving our material a color. We'll also feed it an opacity value so that it has some translucency. For now, I'm just going to hard code this value, but we'll be changing it later. Let's save the material and see how it looks. It's looking pretty good. We can see through the material and we can also see the back side of the sphere. Now let's get to work on adding the white highlight around the edge. To do this, we're going to start by creating a white color to go along with the blue. Now we want to transition between the blue and the white depending on how close we are to the edge of the sphere. One way to transition from one color to another is to use a linear interpolate node, also known as a lerp. So we'll connect our blue and our white to the A and B input pins, and then connect the output pin to the emissive color pin on our material. The transition between the two colors is dictated by the value that's fed to the alpha pin. Since we're not feeding a value, it defaults to a value of 0.5 or exactly halfway in between our blue and our white color. To get the effect we want, we're going to use a very useful node called the Fresnel node. We'll connect that to the alpha. And as you can see, it starts to get close to what we want. A Fresnel node outputs a value between 0 and 1, depending on where the surface of the object is facing relative to the viewer. So if a surface is directly pointing at a viewer, like the center of our sphere, it outputs a value of 0. If the surface is perpendicular to the viewer, as is the case at the edge of our sphere, it outputs a value of 1. Now this is close to the effect we want, but we want the outline to be a little more solid looking. So one way we can achieve that is by using a contrast node. For the contrast value, we'll create a scalar parameter node and label it rim light contrast. And we'll give it a value of 0.5. That looks more like what we want. Now let's look at it in our scene. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's go back to our reference video and choose the next feature we want to implement. 
The next feature to notice is this intersection line. Wherever the shield intersects with objects in the world, you see a white outline. Let's create that next. To get the intersection effect, we'll use a node called the Depth Fade node. This node creates a gradient that starts where two objects intersect and then fades out. For now, let's control the lerp with the output of our depth fade so you can see the effect. Now you won't see much in the material editor since the preview doesn't have any intersecting objects. So let's switch back to our scene. Here you can see it's kind of what we want, but the colors are reversed. It's white in the middle and blue on the edges. We can easily fix that by inserting a one minus node. Now when we check it out in our scene, you can see it's much closer to what we want. Now we can control the distance of the fade using the fade distance default of the depth fade node. We'll set it to 15. There, that looks pretty good. Now the challenge is to combine this with the white shield outline we had first created. One way we can do this is by using the max node, which takes two inputs and chooses whichever one is larger as its output. There, now we have both the white outline around the shield and the intersection outlines. So let's switch back to our reference video and figure out what feature we want to implement next. The feature we'll implement next is the honeycomb pattern that appears on the shield. I've already imported a repeating honeycomb texture that I created in Photoshop. I'll link to this texture in the description below. So let's add the texture to our material graph. And we're going to use this texture as an opacity mask. So we'll delete the hard-coded opacity value we had and replace it with our texture. You can see we need to make some adjustments to get it tile the way we want it to. To do that, we'll add a texture coordinate node. With the texture coordinate node selected, we'll change U tiling to 40 and V tiling to 12. That looks pretty good. One thing that doesn't look quite right is that this opacity mask is also masking our outlines. Since we want those outlines to appear solid, we'll have to do something a little different. For that, we turn again to the max node. We'll take the output of our outline code and the output of the honeycomb texture, and whichever value is higher will be fed into opacity. Let's tone down the amount of opacity from the texture by multiplying it by a smaller value. It's looking pretty good. Let's return to the reference video to take a look at the animation. You can see we get this cascading effect of the honeycomb pattern. To implement this animation, we'll use another texture I've created of this gradient band. You'll see that it's a sharp gradient at one end and a gradual gradient at the other end. Add that texture to our material graph.
And then we're going to add a panner node to animate that texture. We want to animate it on the Y axis. So we'll enter a value of minus 0.2. We'll then multiply this scan line texture against the honeycomb texture. There, that looks pretty good in the preview. Let's take a look at it in the scene. In the scene, you'll notice that there's a little too much time between passes of the animation. If we look back at the reference video, you'll see as soon as one band reaches the ground, another band starts from the top. So let's make an adjustment. We need to change the tiling of our band. We'll add another texture coordinate node. And we'll set the V tiling to two to give us twice as many vertical bands. This looks good in the preview, but now it's half as slow as it needs to be. So let's increase the speed. There in our scene, it looks much better. Looking at our reference video again, you'll notice that the shield is never completely transparent, that it always has a blue cast to it and that that cast gets more opaque at the edges. Recreating that feature is pretty easy. We'll just use another Fresnel node. We'll add the output of that Fresnel node the output from our masks. And let's take a final look at it in our scene. There you go. That's a pretty convincing looking Winston shield. There are definitely more enhancements we could add to make it closer to the original, but this is a pretty good start. We covered quite a number of nodes that you should find useful in other materials. The linear interpolate node or lerp node, the panner node, the Fresnel node, and the depth fade node. If you create something interesting with these nodes, go ahead and drop a link in the comments. And if you have suggestions for other video game effects you'd like to see recreated, or just other topics for this channel, leave those in the comments as well. That'll do it for this episode of The Unrealist. If you find these videos helpful, let me know by subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.